Today we look at the two greatest fighters on the planet, both effective and considered the most advanced fighters in the world and respected by many countries from all over the planet, and both used by countries right near one another. And with that, today we look at Sweden's Saab Gripen and the multinational Eurofighter Typhoon and find out the differences between them. How's it going boys and girls, more or less boys, because more boys watch military videos, but either way, my name is Dave Wapple, and welcome to FTD Facts channel, where I look at people, cultures, places, and all that awesome jazz, and me, I'm excited about this because I've talked about the sub gripping or sub gripping before in the past, but we haven't looked at the Euro fighter, and there's a lot of controversy behind this fighter because it's rather expensive, but it does perform very well. So before we get in this video, I just want to let you guys know about our cool sponsor that is Grammarly.com. These guys are all about making your grammar better, and I just realized that light over there is crap, so I'm going to fix that right now. Ooh, that's way better. But before I get in this video also, I just want to let you guys know if you like military stuff and content, be sure to check out our cool military playlist. I'm going to put it in the description box below and throughout the cards in this video. But let's get rocking and rolling and learn about the differences between these two great, amazing European fighters. So starting off with one of my favorites, the Saab Gripen, made by Sweden's Saab Defense Company. It first flew on December 9th, 1988, and was introduced into Sweden's Air Force several years later on June 9th, 1996. It was made, obviously, to replace the Draken and the Viggen, which were the big fighters within Sweden. One major demand was that the Gripen was made to be compatible with what was known as the BAS-90 system. Now, this was actually a really interesting system that Sweden had invented, basically because Sweden is so stretched out and because of, you know, politics with Russia and other countries around the world, they had a system where pretty much fighters could just take off off of runways. They could be held in small little garages and things like that. And that's pretty much the Bass 90 system. And with that, they needed fighters to take off of runways and highways in under 800 meters. The development of this fighter did begin in 1982 when the government spent 25 million SEK for five prototypes. Now, the Eurofighter, it flew on March 24th, 1997, and it was introduced finally into an Air Force on August 4th, 2003. But one major difference is that when it was introduced, the Eurofighter was made for several countries instead of just one. Although most countries like the UK were looking for a new fighter as far back as the 1970s, by 1983, Italy, Germany, France, the UK, and Spain created what was known as the Future Euro. European fighter aircraft. France at one point did pull out of this program to go on its own adventure to create its own aircraft. But between the remaining countries, by 1986, the cost came to around $180 million, in which they had one prototype known as the EAP. So that's basically just a very cut, sort of quick, dry version of these two aircrafts. I mean, there's a lot more details around it, but let's look at some of the variants of them. Now, for the Sab Gripen, it's got quite a few different variants. Besides its standard A and B versions, which it started off, with basically the B being a two-seater version, there was also an upgrade for this called the C and D version. This was not only a NATO-compatible variant, but also the A and B were not capable of being refueled in the air, and this changed for these two particular versions. There was also the NG, which was introduced as a new engine. This eventually evolved into Saab's 39E version for Brazil. The F is also a two-seater version made for the country of Brazil. And on top of that, there were a few proposed versions, an unmanned version, and one made for electronic warfare, and even one designed to be taken off of aircraft carriers. The Typhoon, however, had a lot of different versions made during its testing phase. Each country, when it was being developed, had a different set of equipment loaded onto the plane, whether it be avionics or flight controls. However, as for the actual produced version, there are a few different variants. Basically, for the Typhoon, you get Trance 1 and 2, which included new hardware such as a computer. There is also the Trance 3A, which has fiber optic wiring and much more. 
Within these, there are also several block changes, in which there's at least six major block changes. Within England, there is the T1, the T1A, and the F2, which is your major single seat variant. On top of that, there's also T3 and the FGR4, which actually, this isn't really a difference, this is a similarity between the two, the fact that the Saab Gripen and, of course, the Typhoon do have single and even two-seater versions. For operators, though, and combat history, let's take a look. Besides Brazil and Sweden, the Saab Gripen is used in the countries of Czech Republic, Hungary, and South Africa. Unfortunately, South Africa has a lot of them in storage right now because the maintenance costs for them were much higher than they anticipated. There's also the country of Thailand, and despite what some people may think, the UK has used them at Empire Test Pilot School to train other pilots. Basically, you're looking at seven different countries that operate this aircraft. Sweden also used this aircraft in Libya, and it's also been a part of air policing patrols in the Baltic, as well as a few other operations. And as a matter of fact, by 2001, it's said that the Sub Gripen had over 650 combat missions alone. The Eurofighter Typhoon has been used by a lot more. Basically, you got the countries of Germany, Italy, Austria, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Spain, and of course the UK. There are also many potentials like Poland and Switzerland, Finland, and many more, which comes in at around nine countries. Similar to the Sub Gripen, it's been a part of Baltic policing operations. Many other countries like Italy have used it in Libya, and there was also Operation Shatter in Iraq and other operations around the world. Okay, so now here's probably the really interesting part, and this is the accidents that have happened with these two fighters. In the year 2017, there was a report done on both of these aircrafts. The Saab Gripen had only 10 major incidents with 9 total hull losses and only 1 loss of life. The Eurofighter has been in 9 major incidents, 4 of them unfortunately being fatal. And in total, as of today, the Saab Gripen has about 247 of these aircrafts that have been made, whereas there are actually a lot more Eurofighter Typhoons coming in at around 558. In terms of specifications, this is my favorite part, where we get to look at the specific things about these two fighters and see what's different about them. For the Saab Gripen, it is a smaller aircraft. It comes in a little bit shorter with a length of 14.1 meters, whereas the Typhoon comes in at 15.96 meters. The Gripen also has a smaller wingspan coming in at 8.4 meters where the Typhoon sits at 10.95. On top of that, the Sub Gripen has a low profile being 4.5 meters, where the Typhoon is a little bit larger, coming in at 5.28 meters. Keep in mind, of course, these particular types are based off of specific versions. And when it comes to that, let's look at the average speed. Thing is, these two are pretty nose to nose when it comes to speed. And of course, yes, I always remind people that speed, or like when it comes to the speed of sound, it is different at different heights. And with that, at high altitudes, the Gripen comes in at 2,460 kilometers per hour, whereas the Typhoon is slightly faster, not by much, coming in at 2,495 kilometers per hour at high altitudes. Also, when it comes to combat radius, I have found a lot of information to be very conflicting, so unfortunately I can't really put that in. But as for armaments-wise, this is where things look pretty similar. First of all, they both use the same auto cannon, and that is the 1x27mm Mauser BK 27 revolver cannon. In terms of hard points though, the Typhoon kind of wins in this department. Because the Sab Gripen comes in at a total of 10 hard points, it has them under the wings and fuel silage, whereas the Eurofighter comes in at 13 hard points. This is also due to the fact that the payload for the Sab Gripen comes up to about 13,227 pounds, whereas the Eurofighter can carry much more coming in at around 19,800 pounds. Of course, the big thing that you guys are probably wondering is how do these two perform in terms of dogfighting? 
Well, believe it or not, they are so bloody close to each other. Of course, this depends on conditions and even the pilot, but in terms of overall technology and a reasonably skilled pilot, the Saab Gripen has a dogfighting rating of approximately 74%, whereas the Eurofighter comes in at 75. One of the downsides, though, is that the Eurofighter is a lot more costly to operate. The flight per hour, this also does change over time and from country to country, but for the Saab Gripen, it comes in at approximately $7,800 to operate per hour, whereas the Eurofighter, again, depending on the country, the highest it's ever clocked in at is $32,400 US. Again, as I said, a lot of different things change there. It's the country, the technology, the maintenance that's on a bunch of other things. It, those ones are not quite neck to neck, but overall the Sub Gripen was made to be a rather inexpensive fighter to operate per hour when it comes to cost. Speaking of cost, let's take a look at it for the unit cost for a Sub Gripen. It comes in at around 30 to 60 million, depending on the version. Whereas the Eurofighter comes in at a lot more at around $105 million US at least. I do find that number really high though, because I mean, I have looked at the F-35 and it's kind of around the same price and the F-35 has got a lot of bells and whistles with it. However, I have also read from multiple sources that the British alone have spent $110 million on one of these fighters. So it is a little bit hard to say, but either way, guys, that is the differences between these two. Let me know some of your thoughts. Hell, if we forgot some facts, feel free to leave it down there in the comments section below because, you know, hey, man, if you got any of you guys are like actual pilots that have actually, you know, had hands on experience with these two, feel free to leave it down because that's the best part about the comment section is, you know, you get to educate everybody as well as us educating you know, everybody else too. So, but my name is Dave Wapple. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to check out Grammarly. It's down there in the description box below. And don't forget to check out our awesome playlists on other, you know, fighters and military craft. I think you guys will really like it. Give those a peek. But my name is Dave Wapple. I'll see you guys later. Bye. All right. So here's those playlists that I was telling you about. Feel free to check it out. Oh, if you haven't, all right, so here's those playlists that I was telling you about. By the way, if it's your first time here, be sure to hit that, you know, subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in tune of what we're doing. We'll see you guys in the next one, and you guys have yourself a fantastic day. Bye.